Welcome to Solve Climate by 2030. Today, universities in almost all 50 U.S. states, Puerto Rico, D.C., and several other countries are hosting state and region-wide webinars focused on ambitious and feasible things that we can all do in our cities, our towns, and states in the coming year to really move the needle on climate change. Here is the most important idea to take home today. What you do locally will change the future. Fact, the U.S. state of Georgia is a top 10 solar state. The neighboring Sunshine State of Florida has very little solar power due to outdated laws and regulations. When we launched Solve Climate a year ago, we could never have imagined that today entire countries and much of the world's economy would be shut down with hundreds of thousands of people ill, thousands having passed away, and our health systems overwhelmed. I take that back. We could easily have imagined this. Our health experts and scientists warned us this was coming. After SARS and MERS, they told us this was coming, and yet we didn't take preventive action, we didn't prepare. COVID-19 has shown how fragile our health and economic systems are to extreme events. Our scientists have told us clearly that unchecked, climate change will turn our lives into an unending series of extreme events. Floods, droughts, rising sea levels, pests and disease, more extreme storms and hurricanes, all of this leaving hundreds of millions of people homeless and on the move. We can change this. We still have time to change that future. Last year, the world's top climate scientists told us that we have until 2030, 10 years now, to cut global warming pollution aggressively in order to stabilize the climate at the low end. That warning was the genesis for this national and international discussion today on how to solve climate by 2030. Solving climate in 10 years, that sounds challenging. And yet fixing the energy half of climate change by 2030 is looking more, not less likely, than it was four years ago. The cost of solar and wind power, batteries, and electric vehicles have plummeted. In many cases, they are less expensive now than the fossil fuel power that causes global warming, and they are getting cheaper every day. Already, utility-scale wind and solar, big solar and wind farms that feed power into the grid, these technologies are crushing fossil fuels in much of the U.S. In Colorado, Idaho, and California, renewable bids are coming in at half the price that the cheapest fossil fuel plants can do. And this is where rooftop solar and battery systems are headed in the near future. On the vehicles front, all the major manufacturers see this coming. Mercedes-Benz announced last fall that they have designed their last gasoline-powered car. Going forward, every new model of theirs will be electric. Combining electric-powered vehicles with the impact of driverless technology, we could see a very rapid transition away from gasoline-based cars to EVs in the next decade. All this progress was the result of a major technology push by national governments. Starting in America in the 70s and then ramping up with the Danes, the British, the Japanese and Koreans, the Germans, and most recently the Chinese and Indians, government policies have brought these industries to scale. And now the market is taking over and renewables battery storage, and electric vehicles are on track to deliver power and transportation at prices unsubsidized that will lead to major disruptions of energy markets in the 2020s. Can we get there fast enough to solve climate? Well, this is where you come in. With plummeting prices for renewables and electric-powered transports, the pace of the clean energy revolution will no longer be determined by Washington, D.C. and other national governments. Instead, the core action is going to be in your city, at your electric utility, and in your state capital. The key to solving climate by 2030 will be clearing the path at the local level to rapid deployment of solar, wind, battery storage, and electric vehicles. We need to get rid of outmoded laws and regulations that are holding back the transition. Florida needs to take the lesson from Georgia. It's imperative that we have justice in this transition. We have to make sure that the millions of green jobs that are created are jobs for all and that everyone has access to clean, affordable power and mobility. Today, in Nebraska and New Jersey, in Idaho and Alabama, in Bangladesh and Brazil, we're going to find out what are three ambitious but feasible things that we can do right at home to smooth the path for clean energy and to bring energy justice to our communities. Following the webinar, I hope you will join a group or class discussion about what you can do to make these solutions real. Then, what next? 
Well, this summer, young people in particular have a terrific opportunity to both support climate solutions and gain valuable job skills in a down economy. The most powerful thing you can do to solve climate by 2030 is to join the political campaign of a candidate who best represents your views on climate solutions. In doing that, you'll also learn how to communicate, you'll gain courage, and most importantly, be part of a creative, strong, powerful vision for the future. COVID-19 is giving us a stark lesson about what happens when we ignore warnings from science. Today, we'll see how 10 years can be enough time to drive the climate solutions that we need and that the future will be what we make it. Thank you for the work you will do to solve climate.